This is a pyraminx. It is the most commonly accepted form of a Rubik's tetrahedron, if you will, because it has each face made up of nine smaller triangles the same way each square face of a 3x3 Rubik's cube has nine smaller squares on it. Today I'm going to tell you why that's wrong. What's up guys, it's Lord of the Cubes, and today I'm going to explain why the pyraminx is not actually a Rubik's tetrahedron. But let's take a step back for a bit. What even would be the proper form of a Rubik's tetrahedron? Well, what a lot of people don't understand about the Rubik's Cube is that it's not just a cube made up of smaller cubes, per se. It has center pieces, edge pieces, and corner pieces. Each face has one center piece, each edge has one edge piece, and each corner has one corner piece. No extra pieces are needed because smooth turns can be made. The same checks out for the Megaminx, which is the official Rubik's Dodecahedron. As you can see, one center piece per side, one edge piece per edge, and one corner piece per corner. However, the Pyraminx has one edge piece per edge, zero center pieces, one corner piece per corner, and uh, whatever the hell these things are. These tips don't really do anything. As you can see, there aren't really any turns you can make that separate them from the pieces they're attached to, their respective corner pieces. All they really do is just spin around and add nothing to the solve. So while this is the aesthetically perfect version of a Rubik's Tetrahedron, it's not the mechanically perfect version of a Rubik's Tetrahedron. And one important thing to think about with the Pyraminx is that mechanically, it's actually a corner turning puzzle. Unlike the Rubik's Cube, which is a face turning puzzle. So what would an actual face turning Rubik's Tetrahedron be? Well, first of all, these pieces have to go, these little annoying tips. They would just become part of these corner pieces. They wouldn't, they would just turn in one. We would also need to have center pieces and change the mechanism a bit so that the centers are the things rotating and not the corner pieces. The thing about tetrahedra though is that face turning tetrahedra are also sort of corner turning. There's not really a difference, but pyraminxes have corner turning mechanisms by nature and it'd just be even more satisfying if the mechanism turns around the center pieces. Anyway, enough about that. Here's our technically perfect Rubik's tetrahedron, the Jinx Pyraminx. As you can see, we've got one center per face, one corner per corner, and one edge piece for each edge. Now, if you look on the inside, which uh, you can't really see, um, but you, well, you can sort of see that this corner isn't connected. Anyway, you're just gonna have to trust me on this, but it really is a face turning puzzle. The way that you solve it is by solving the corners and edges exactly like you would with the Pyraminx, and then just doing a triple sledgehammer to fix any centers that are not solved. Just like that. Now, I love this puzzle. In fact, I love this puzzle so much that I also got every other version of it, ranging all the way up to the 7x7 seven seven Jinx Pyraminx. Now, you might be saying, Lord of the Cubes, what is the corner twist pyraminx doing as the 2x2 two two jinx pyraminx? It's literally called the corner twist pyraminx. And while it is mechanically a corner turning puzzle, which you can't see at all, and neither can I in real life actually, it's just, just an empty void in there apparently. This is actually the 2x2 two two analog of the jinx pyraminx. Now you can see this with the 2x2 two two version of the 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube, because there's only corner pieces. It's just a 3x3 three three version with only the corners, leaving this 2x2 two two look to it. And you can see the same thing is true with the corner twist pyraminx. It is just a 2x2 two two version of the Jinx pyraminx, only the corners, and it's still face turning. Like obviously the faces don't actually mechanically turn, but I'm gonna let it slide since this is a trivially easy puzzle to begin with. Along with some other variants, Shang Xiao makes a Void Jinx Pyraminx, which actually functions equivalent to what a Pyraminx would be if these tips didn't exist, which would be great if it turned well at all. Being a Void puzzle, it has like this like rail mechanism that real is really catchy, really unforgiving, and uh, these are actually tiles with stickers attached to them, so sometimes they can just- I can't make it happen on command. But sometimes these tiles will just pop off during a solve with no warning. Anyway, I am trying to collect every variant of the Jinx Pyraminx that was mass produced, so um, yeah. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but Lord of the Cubes, what about the FTO? Well, the face-turning octahedron is already face-turning, so it's a lot closer to what its official counterpart would be. In fact, the only difference is that this version doesn't have the fixed centers. So this is the aesthetically perfect Rubik's octahedron, and this is the mechanically perfect Rubik's octahedron. Now, as you can see, the faces here look a bit different from that of the Jinx Pyraminx. The reason why that is necessary is because each time you do a turn, one of these little triangle pieces gets left behind on three of the sides. 
And if you look at it, it would actually be impossible to not leave this behind on every turn. As for Icosahedra, well, that's something I'll cover in a future video. Now this puzzle solves almost identically to the FTO anyway. So the FTO is a pretty good substitute if you can't get your hands on one of these. This is a crazy octahedron. I would recommend it. It's from Diane MFA, and they remind you that on every centerpiece. And the color scheme is just way better than that of the Landland FTO, so would highly recommend. But since these centers don't actually move at all when you turn it, the FTO is basically the same puzzle. You just don't have to solve it around any specific centers. Okay, so now that we've covered the true tetrahedral form of a Rubik's Cube, let's talk about the true cubic form of a Pyraminx. And frankly, I, I don't really think one exists with the tips, because no one's going to put these tips on a cube, but you can get one without the tips, and it is called the Ready Cube. So just so we're clear here, this is a Moyu Ready Cube. This is a Yushin 8 Petals Cube, which is a Ready Cube, basically. I mean, they turn the exact same way. This one looks cooler, but this one has Magnus, which is really cool. Anyway, since these are basically the same puzzle, we don't need this. So if you ignore these tips, this is the same concept applied to different platonic solids. This tetrahedron has unmovable corners, which has movable edges and no centers. And the same thing applies here. These corners never move relative to each other since only one rotates at a time. Meanwhile, these edges can move about the cube. An interesting property of the ready cube is that you can never have an edge in the same place but flipped because each face has an even number of sides. For example, this white green edge here, this can never be inserted the wrong way. No matter how you try to put in or what moves you do, it's impossible to get it in the wrong way. Now the pyramids on the other hand has an odd number of sides per face. We've got triangles here, so you can't have flipped edges. Anyway, that's all that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if I should make more puzzle theory videos like this, because I enjoyed it. Also, let me know if you also think that the Jinx Pyraminx is better than its easier counterpart. And on that note, this is Lord of the Cubes, signing off.